Cross Pollination. I'm Carrie Preston, and today I'm talking to Andries Spierling and Bob Foltz from Tangood Foltz, a specialist nursery in the north of the Netherlands in the province of Groningen. They started, like many other nurserymen, their nursery in the late 90s and early 2000s. And this group of specialist nurseries developed a palette of perennials that formed the Dutch wave. I'm going to be interviewing a number of these nurseries in the coming months. And I'm very excited for this first one because Bob and Andres started their nursery in a very collaborative fashion. And on the very first day of their opening, the grand opening of their nurseries, they had their first Northern Nursery Days where they invited other nurseries to come and sell their plants at their nursery and create a very yeah, collaborative culture. And I feel that this, this culture um, is a unique aspect of both Dutch culture and Dutch garden history. So join us for the series and for this conversation with Andries and Bob, and I hope you enjoy. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you for coming inside on this probably one of the first gorgeous days of spring yesterday was also beautiful yeah it was it was though today is even more beautiful yeah, <laughs> I feel yeah. like i don't know but i can imagine you guys were out uh working in the nursery getting everything ready I, i've been out the whole morning yeah yeah tell us a little bit about how town food Fultz started <laughs> and did you start it together yeah we started it in um in the year 2000, in 1999, we bought this farm mm -hmm. with, uh, for uh, uh, hectare, but it's hectare, acres? No, it's more. Yeah, it's, it's like one, one hectare is like 2.2 acres or something like that. Yeah, well, it, we have four hect hectare and it was just uh, past, year, past year. It was okay. uh, uh, the former owner had his uh, working farm and um, here we- uh, Past year in a barn and cows. <laughs> okay. And <Yep>. tractors. <laughs> the buildings were already all there, and there's a big pasture and a bunch of farm stuff. Yeah, but yeah. but no greenhouse, uh, nothing. But we did have a collection. Uh, Bob uh, had been for eight years co-owner of a, uh, another nursery. Okay. Uh, oh, I didn't know that. Also in the, the north. north? Here, in the north, near uh, Paterswolde, near Groningen, south of Groningen, and that nursery has has been split up. Okay. And half of the collection of the Eglantier, the former nursery, went in lots of loads of uh, a little wagon to our new place. Okay. And um, um, so we uh, we made the whole uh, the whole area. We made it ready. Uh, about half of the two uh, of the four hectare is um, uh, is is nursery and and gardens, and the rest um, we transformed into kind of. Um, natural area yeah. um, but yes. but uh, yeah, art installations in that more pasture yeah that's right. right that's right yeah and um um yeah we we had a collection so we could start pretty quickly uh, okay. um but there were some amazing uh, things uh, lots of plants that came from the other mother beds from the former nursery um that were for example like like 60 centimeters high we planted it here, and they were. We planted them in in February, March. We planted them in the snow, <laughs> and in really? June and June they were like uh, one and a half meter high. The same plants. Well, I'm at, the soil up there yeah, is amazingly. The rich. soil was extremely fertile, and also because it, yeah, it has been used by cows uh, for like. Okay, so not only just rich goods clay, but. Yeah, but it's not clay. We don't have clay here. Oh, you're not clay. Okay. The things on the other side of the road. Okay. Oh, that well, that makes it a lot easier to work then. Exactly. Yeah, I'm glad we. Well, I'm glad we don't have clay. Clay has also positive things. Yeah. Uh, zand op veen. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's sand on peat. Yeah. yeah. That's the kind of ideal, actually. It is perfect. And yeah. then very rich because of the, the the cow shit for years. So. Yeah. So yeah. did you did you deliberately did you know like oh this is good soil this is workable this is like was that part of your thought process we didn't know it for sure of course because we didn't take uh, well, we did some tests we did a few tests yeah. and it came out well but we assumed that it was good i mean it was pasture 
yeah, and, and you could tell by the trees and stuff. And yeah. yeah, now there weren't any trees. Don't forget. None. Like not even like a hedgerow. <laughs> no, 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 we planted everything. We planted yeah. everything. Yeah. Wow, and it's amazing because, I mean, I was there last summer well, only, uh, and it, it feels older than 20 years. Yeah. It really well, does. the the bone, the trees um, in front of the house. Okay, those they the, were there. They were, that was uh, the old castagna, old chestnut trees. There was an old fruit, uh, a baumgart, the fruit. A few of those trees were still there. But everything behind. But the, everything behind was, the there house. was nothing. There was nothing. But it's really amazing to realize what you can achieve in 20 years. Yeah. 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 I mean, and I've, I've been there a few times through the years and I think, I think I must have gone in 2013. So then it was only like 12 years old. And it, I mean, it felt, Th that catalpa there, like then it was already this like magnificent thing. So yeah. if you think that that's- well, the, the catalpa actually was the first tree we planted. And was it? It, yeah. it had been uh, in a big container uh, at the former nursery, but then it was like two meters high or something. But it was the first one we planted, really yeah. in the snow. Yeah. yeah, in the snow. We still have the picture. It was a, a moment for us. Yeah, well, I can but, imagine. Uh, yeah. I, well, I find that catalpa very sort of like, iconic for your nursery yeah that's yeah. right yeah yeah so was was the idea to go to this new place because you wanted to start something together um or what did you want to expand and make it bigger or am i getting too much into old no 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 <laughs> we just we wanted to expand we had uh, the place where we were to make it simple the play the, the nursery where we were i was uh we were co-owners with that nursery mm -hmm. um the um, was that when my partner in the nursery was going to stop, mm -hmm. uh, that we would take that nursery over. Okay. That was the initial the, agreement. Initial yeah. agreement. They had decided to stop. We, um, and we said, oh, we're ready to take over. And their first reaction was, yeah, okay, I think we're ready for that. And then in a couple of weeks afterwards, they decided that they didn't want that. Well, the, the important thing is they lived on the nursery. Yeah. They realized that, uh, and they were owner of, uh, of the grounds. Mm -hmm. uh, the nursery was co-owned, but okay. the land was- And then they'd still be living there and then you'd be yes. owning it. And they, they thought we, we don't want to live uh, in the heart of the nursery of someone else. I get that. Yeah, and I get how you think you want that until it gets that far. And the, so yeah. this was just easier. And so then you split the collection and you said, okay, we'll just start somewhere new. Yeah, but yeah. you already brought not just a collection, but your reputation and your network. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So and, and, and we uh, the, the split of the collection was also in quite an organic way. Uh, our former uh, colleague, she um, started with uh, annuals and... Um, Cowplant. What's in Cow when Bob came into that nursery, um, uh, he uh, developed the um, perennial collection uh, okay. and the salvias. Yeah. Uh, and the um, pelargoniums. Yeah. And when we split split the nursery, uh, the perennials, the salvias, and the pelargoniums went with us. Okay. And she continued for two years with uh, annuals and those. Uh, Orangeria plants. Okay, I get. Yeah, I can also see the, that. the clients who came for perennials and salvias, most of them went with us. Yeah, and uh, the the annual people they stayed there. That makes but, sense. And yeah, the, the, so so that's why we uh, could start pretty quickly, and we had the contacts and uh, and my back background is in the public relations, and so I could. Uh, do the the, uh, the public relations for the nursery quite uh, quite easily. Very exciting to start to start new and to start with a, a completely empty uh, space. Yeah. Um, you, you could because then you already have experience, and so you have like a. That's right. Yes, and we knew uh, pretty uh, good what we uh, wanted, and we made the 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 agreement to just follow our own taste, and that was very uh, important for us. Um, I, I can see that in, 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 in what you have. We made a very big choice. We're going to do, we're going to not only do, but we're also going to sell. Our collection is going to be plants that we stand behind mm -hmm. and that we also use and enjoy and like. Yeah. I can give you a very big example. We still get questions 
from clients or someone walks in, do you have a rose obstam? Yeah. No, we have nothing obstam. So if you don't like it, not going to sell it. We, we, no. it wasn't, it's not our thing. No. We don't use it. We don't have it in the garden. We don't really think it's attractive. We didn't do it. Yeah. So that yeah. for us, it's also important. Um, is it is is it a is it a worthwhile plant considering the leaf, considering the bloom, the flower? How long does it flower? That's also with the perennials. There are a lot of perennials um, that they maybe they have a pretty flower, but maybe they have a pretty flower for one day. Yeah. So it has to be a good me, performing. I don't have it in the garden. I don't use. I don't think Andres doesn't use a lot of them in the garden that he designs. Um, and it's not a plant. Um, we've had this discussion with other nursery people. It's not a plant. If someone comes to you, a client, and they're here at the nursery, yeah, I want a good grass. I wanted this. You always walk to the same one. Yeah. And yeah. there's twenty other ones. <laughs> but you walk to you walk to two or three of them, you know, and so it's pretty logical or logical. It's it's pretty easy if you take the time to make a good collection of plants that you have a, that we have experience with, which is a very important mm -hmm. um, for everyone um, in the garden. Yeah. I yeah, mean, to see what they're going to do. And see what they're going to And if someone says, goes to that plant, and they say, oh, how is that plant? I said, I have no idea. I'm yeah. really honest with my clients. Well, I imagine you have the type of clientele that you can tell them that, be like, we're trying this out if you want to yeah, try it. I put it in the garden this year. I can yeah. tell you next year. I have no yeah. idea. Yeah. Um, because I think that's one of the best ways. I think that's one way that we've built up a good public word about us that we are honest with our clients um and we try our best to sell good quality plants yeah. we know most of the plants a lot of them almost all the plants we or we make them ourselves we've had them in our hands we see their roots we know how they're growing um we know how they leave this nursery yeah and um that's for us very important. Yeah. yeah. And you're not breeding for your own new varieties. You're just like I know sometimes. Sometimes. We have we've we've already brought yeah. a few salvias, a new well, salvias. A couple of great ones. Salvia Tonterlinden is yeah. the best. Uh, uh, Tonterlinde is from you. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's ours, yeah. And that's yeah. I we think it's one of the best salvia in general. Yeah. It's a beautiful one. Uh, big, big flowers, really burgundy red, nice, nice color. And it shouldn't be um, hardy and or at least it came from a seedling from a not hardy salvia. Well, semi hardy. Yeah. Semi hardy. Yeah. Um, and after this winter, I'm going to say no. <laughs> but that one comes back. Tom to Linden and for all the clients that have bought so it. Shouldn't it be, shouldn't be hardy, but it keeps coming back. Yeah. Well, I, I, we think it can have about like minus 10, minus yeah. 12. Not yet. And I feel like the last 10 years, like more salvias that wouldn't have been hardy before, we'll be curious what this winter does, are, are doing better. I think that a lot of the salvias, it, it, it depends on when the people plant it, how long it's been in the garden, how, how the root <clears> structure <throat> is. Um, I've had salvias come back that I thought, oh, that thing is for surely dead. And all of a sudden in July, <laughs> I see something peak. coming out of the ground. I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah. he made it, you know. Yeah. Um, and so and when, you, when you find it, it's, it's, it's not like you're doing rows and rows and crossing things, but it just, it'll pop up and then you'll collect it and exactly. be like, oh, this one's- We, this are, not, we are not trying to um, um, make new plants. Um, but we are always alert. I'm alert, and Lars, Lars is the person that um, the person that uh, does all of my propagation. Propagation. He's head prop propagator here. He is very alert. He walks through the garden to look for seedlings, and um, we have a a, um, a bond. What is bond? Variegated. A, a variegated um, persicaria. 
um, you know, and we found that in the garden. So we, and he found it actually. Yeah. And we took it out and potted it up. And, you know, you keep, um, we're very alert with those things. Yeah. And the woman who did the, uh, who does the Moorbedim, the mother plant. Yeah. yeah. Um, she's also a great garden woman. And she always says, hey, Bob, there's a lot of seedlings here. Maybe we should save them. And, you know, every, I mean, the people that are busy with the plants mm -hmm. are also busy with seedlings, new plants that come up. Flock. Yeah, see the difference. We have a couple new phloxes, our own phlox. Okay. There was a seedling from, it's still called seedling from. <laughs> um, I can't think of the name, which it was. But it's a beauty and it's good and it doesn't, you know, and those are the things that we build on and um, and then we can stack it, we can make cuttings. Yeah. And we can sell it. No, the the beatings are dark beatings. We have our own beatings. Very wow. dark, dark red yeah. uh, okay. Yeah. And last year I finally got a name. It's called Tay Fleck. <laughs> our our dogs. Oh, oh <laughs> nice. Called Tay, the other one is called Fleck. So yeah. That is called Tay Fleck. <laughs> I would wind up doing that too. <laughs> you came up from Amsterdam before to garden originally when you like because Andres, are you a northerner to begin with? Yeah, I, I come from the north. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I feel like a lot of people who got into gardening <clears throat> in the 90s moved up from Amsterdam, bought pieces of property, and that there was this whole sort of like community of gardeners that started then. Um, now, maybe Andres knows more about that, but I mean, like Fleur and Erdik from the Planet Plantage, and they're, they're, they studied in, they're from the north, aren't they? Yeah, yeah also quite a lot of people studied, studied in, uh, in Groningen, that for yeah. me uh, also, mm -hmm. and for us, yeah, Bob uh, had his dancing career in Amsterdam, yeah. and for a certain production, he was invited to make a piece for a, uh, a company in Groningen. And that's okay. that's the way he came to Groningen. Yeah, and we met then, and that's how. Okay. That, this was all long before we had had the nursery. Was way okay. the nursery. You had come up north. I was curious if you came up for the gardens, but you, you no, came no, up, no, no. and then you and then we, Yeah. Yeah, we um, we had. I had a house, but we we lived in the, also part time in a in a caravan in a, a big trailer, and. Uh, that that thing had to move, uh, and we moved it to a, a farm in the north of Drenthe. There mm -hmm. we had quite a lot of space, and we were always working in the garden. And there, it's actually the whole thing started. There, there's where it started, the whole nursery thing. Yeah, you got a piece of property, and we're, it kept growing, kind of thing. Well, I'll tell you, try to keep it short. Um, it's <laughs> we had a lot of space. We got into plants, um, or got into plants. Andres was always more, actually more into plants than I was into plants. I was never a big plant person. Never, 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 never. But you got bit hard, apparently. Well, I in, all of a sudden I enjoyed it. So there was something about I enjoyed seeing them growing, a plant growing. It interested me. And I was between uh, productions. I had just finished one production. I had a few months off to begin a new production. And I thought, what am I going to do? <laughs> and I thought, you know what? I'm going to go see if I can get a job or at a nursery and learn a little bit of what I'm doing because I have, actually have no idea what I'm doing. So I got a job as at the Egelantier, Egelantier, that was the nursery. And um, <clears throat> I got that job. For just a few days or for a few days and i think i had worked there for maybe two weeks yeah. and andres was taking me there because he was where he works in groningen and he picked me up and one day he picked me up and he said to me i know what i want to be <laughs> <laughs> point 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 <laughs> i want to be a nursery man <laughs> and we uh, spoke and that, uh, how old was i then 30, 20, 35. Okay. Yeah. It's fine. You know what you were. I mean, you were so, you were a dancer, so you were. I was a <laughs> very successful choreographer. <laughs> yeah. uh, his, his dancing company was uh, was was doing really well. Yeah. 
but uh, so there was no no need to make a change. It was just that you were really you were taken passionate. completely uh, by. I plans. think it was the first time, to be honest, that I really made a decision in my life. <laughs> I clean. It sounds big, but it is true that I really made a decision. I know what I want to do. Dance for me was something that I saw a production when I was 16 or 17. I was headed for college to major in music. Uh, my first year was music. And I saw a production of dancers. I thought, well, that's kind of nice. Maybe I should try that. And you just so sort of rolled into it. I rolled into everything. I rolled into Amsterdam uh, going for, because I had a job as a dancer out of, in New York. I was in France. I had friends in Amsterdam. I came to Amsterdam to go heading back to New York. And they, someone asked me, uh, one of the universities here, or not a university, the big dance school in Rotterdam, they said, would you give classes? Because I was giving classes. I started giving classes. I start, and then I thought, should I make a piece? I started choreography. Someone wanted to be my agent. It you, just you were invited to do a piece for uh, Shafi uh, Theater for the Shafi Theater, and it was really a hit. That was the, one of the biggest hits in Amsterdam they ever saw. <laughs> and you know, I just Carrie, I just rolled into it, like you said. I rolled into it. I never said I want to be a choreographer. I want to be a dancer. You just became one. I became one. Yeah, and here yeah. you thought. I want to. I want to become. I, I want to be. A, I think I know. I will know what I want to do. I want to have a nursery. <laughs> it it fitted so 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 well because I was very in, much interested in into plans. I was very interested into dance as well. Yeah. But um, but then this discussion in the car, just like it was a drive of like 10, 15 minutes. You just knew. And and we were we came in uh, at, at the, the the farm where we uh, had the caravan. And we sat in the car. We sat in the car for like a, a half an hour, an hour. And then it was uh, the de decision was made. Uh, yeah. And the next day, um, he phoned the people from uh, the Bestuur. The Bestuur from the company and the dancers. Yeah, the management of the dance, yeah. And I said, there's not going to be a next production. And we had just oh, gotten, yes. we had just gotten subsidy. Ooh. For four, to uh, his butt off for how many years? And finally, you're giving him structural subsidies. Just no, nah, no thanks. <laughs> but it was crazy, and you know, yeah. And really, you knew, and so this is when you made the switch from Elian, or you stayed at Elian. No, no, he wasn't. No, then, then we we spoke with. Um, we wanted to start a nursery then already. Mm -hmm. I bought a tunnel, you know. and he bought a tunnel already. Immediately, <laughs> the next day I ordered a tunnel. <laughs> and then we uh, we asked the people from the Evantier, from from hey, can we have a talk? Uh, they we invited them to come uh, for a night to talk about how they started their nursery, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, how yeah we had a quite a good contact contact with them. Give give us advice. It was a very stimulating talk. Um, and they called us the next uh, the next day, and they said to to Bob, "From hey, you can start another nursery, but uh, yeah, why don't you join us and become um, in the future co-owner of our nursery?" They they immediately felt his uh, his passion and also his talent. Yeah. Um, they they really realized from well, this is a great combination. Yeah. Um, and this so that happens, and we moved to. We also moved to the other nursery. We lived there in a, also in a caravan again, but quite big. Had our own piece, uh, our own part of the, the 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 the, the land, and uh, yeah, that that would have been like eight years. You with with the so long, yeah, eight years. And I can imagine that was a great. Um... I'm trying directly learning school, like like because then you're you're sort of in apprenticeship, so you're you're yeah you, yeah you can ba yeah. have them as a sounding board as you're making decisions, and it's not quite as costly if you make mistakes because you have this other experienced nursery exactly. people, and so that's a great transition period. Yeah. It was a good transition, and I read a lot, and I, um, I mean, I'm glad I worked there. I learned a lot. Uh, Looking back, I wish I would have. The the there was a possibility that I had worked at a perennial nursery because mm. it was annuals and 
whatever kelp planten are, orangerie planten. And um, so in those eight years, I could have learned a lot more about perennials. Mm. When I came here, um, learn more. then I learned and learned and learned and learned. If I look back at those years, uh, we talked about this morning a little bit. Um, and if I look at my little garden that we had, we had our own little garden. Of course, the nursery had gardens, but we had our own little garden uh, where we had our caravan. What was my, I mostly liked were the shade, were the shade plants. Which, I, which you're getting into more again now. Yeah, and that was the thing I said to Andres, that's always been my, if I look back and back and back and back also as a child, as a child, I said, I hated working in the garden, hated it. I had to, because I had to work in the garden. Mm, okay. if, I wanted to, if I wanted to go swimming in the afternoon. <laughs> okay, Bob, you have to go pick green beans. You have to do this. And my mom had flowers. I hated flowers. Why? I, I didn't hate them. It's flowers have never, they, I don't hate them. Flowers they, never, they didn't speak to you. They never have spoken to me, never. Not really, and still not. Yeah, so you're looking much, because I, I do see the, the love of um, a foliage and structure in- Structure and foliage, yes. That is, that interested me from the beginning. And mm -hmm. I remember rhubarb as a kid. Great, yeah. That leaf, I was like, wow, that interested me. If I look back. Yeah. What plants did I like? I liked rhubarb. <laughs> I'm different. And he's completely <laughs> different. And, and so you're the echinacea guy in the-, the Yeah, echinacea yeah, yeah. stuff, yeah, <laughs> grasses. And that also goes back to my, uh, my background. I, uh, as a child, we went to the, uh, to the islands above uh, the north coast of the Netherlands, the uh, Ameland, the Schelling. Uh, and I loved the grasses there in the dunes and the, the natural flowers. I picked them, I made great bouquets. Uh, when I was a child of like five or six years old. And this whole sunny atmosphere with grasses and wind and movement that, that I liked as a child already. And uh, that I found later in yeah. uh, this type of gardening that, that like of prairie gardening. And uh, I also do, like, do appreciate it. And I do like uh, plants for the shade. And I, uh, I'm, I'm also that new fern garden I love. But uh, for me, it hits more with uh, natural. Because of those childhood memories of the dunes. And yeah, the, so, and yeah. It, yeah. I, I'm, I'm always convinced that these, these early childhood memories of landscape, they do something with yeah. you. Yeah. 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 This morning about, uh, as a child, I always found it a pity when grass was uh, mown uh, because then the whole lush and natural atmosphere was gone. Yeah. It was, he was exactly the opposite, completely opposite. <laughs> when, when they mowed the sides of the road, and uh, I was a grass mower, that was one of my jobs as a 12, 13 year old. You know, I ran, went around with my sitting machine and my, the little, I went to people, that's where I earned some money. I loved it when I was mowing grass because it looked so neat. It created and order. I created order. And I'm still creating order every day. And you, Andres? I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> like, I already knew the answer to that. <laughs> he makes order in my chaos. Yeah, That's but you need, you need that. <laughs> you need that. But you know, and I, and Thanks, Kerry. <laughs> no, I'm more like you, Andres, so don't worry. But you know, I see that more and more and more yeah. also in my, somewhere you ask about choreography, as being a choreographer in a, I saw in my choreography in the last, because I also, after I started the nursery, I also had a time out, <clears throat> a time out, I, <laughs> a burnout. <laughs> but anyway, I started dancing again and I made uh, how many pieces? I don't know, four or five, four or five uh, productions. different productions. And um, I went mm. to, it happened naturally. It, and I think that, and I see that so much in my gardens because I, uh, Andres is the garden designer when it comes to clients and I am the garden designer when it comes to the nursery. That's my work. And 
what has happened in the last few years, also if I look in our side garden here, it's become so, there's, be, there's, be, there's become a, a rust, there has a, a, a feeling Calm. yeah. of calmness, a feeling of, of rest. Um, I, and that happened also in my choreographies. Mm, like it matured in a way. It, for yeah, me, it matured. It matured. Yeah. I mean, for some people, mature is, they go chaotic. Yeah. I matured yeah. and I went very calm. But what's very important for me, now that we're on the subject, is that there's always a knippo. There's a wink. There's a wink. There's a funny. There's a, I can't, otherwise for me, it's boring as hell. Yeah, so it's uh -huh. calm, but then with a twist. There's a surprise. Yeah, I think so. There has to be a frosting. There has to be a surprise. There has to be, if you walk around there, you have to say, what's that? Yeah. And right. that's the way I work in my garden, too. When someone turns the corner, I want them not just to turn the corner and say, oh, how beautiful. Uh-uh. I want them to turn the corner and say, wow. That... I, I haven't didn't. seen that before. Why that I didn't expect. There? No. That no. I didn't expect. No. Didn't expect, yeah. Which you and do definitely have in the garden with a lot of the structures too. Yeah. Yeah. You were talking about a stumpery somewhere. And um, I feel like, the, I think I meant the fern garden, but I, I don't know. Well, yeah. well, the thing is, we talked about, for me, I didn't even know what a stumpery was until actually this week I saw someone on Facebook Look at our stumpery garden. I'm like, stumpery garden. Carrie had it over stumpery garden. And I saw them play, putting all these logs and things in their garden. I'm like, no, I would never do that. But your, your fern section looks like it's, it was sort of, yeah. It's the natural. We had a storm. All the trees blew over. <laughs> <laughs> well, so it is a stumpery. It just happened though. Yeah, so it's yeah, kind yeah. of like your life. Yeah. It, 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 you just happened to go to Amsterdam. You happened to well, go to they went, they went down. We cut the tree off. Yeah. The stump stayed there. And that was funny. I wasn't here. I don't know where I was, in Munich or somewhere. And the guys, they were still cleaning up after the weeks after the storm. And Andres was here with some guys and they were grinding all the stumps down, you know, in the. And Andres said, Do you want the ones in the shade garden? I said, No, <laughs> don't touch them. It's my stumpery. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't know what it was, but it is. It's, it's, just, it's, just, it's a stumpery that happened yeah. like your life happened. And it just, so you wouldn't have ever contrived to put them there. I wouldn't contrive yeah. and put one there. But they, because it's, they were there, you were like, oh, I can do something with this. I, li I yeah. like it and I'll keep it and I'll do something. With it. It's just <laughs> like a combination with the ferns. Turned it's out. It's really great. Yeah. yeah. You yeah, know, it's, 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 I, I, I think it's one of my favorite sections in your, in your garden now. And, and that's saying something because I, I, f I always felt like um, the section behind, well, the catalpa is still amazing, but then after the catalpa, you have this really sort of sunny, bright, airy garden that was like, that always spoke to me. And it might be that my my tastes are evolving and what I'm looking for, but like that always caught my attention. And this, this the last time I was there, I was like, wow, these, these little nooks and cranny sections with all these, it, they were really, mm. I don't know. Um, they felt fresh. It was it was a, it was very interesting because um, after I completely changed it and um, it was also all almost all new plants were in because everything was destroyed from the storm. It grew quite quickly. Everything, luckily, um, and it was so interesting. I thought of the um, here at the nursery that we saw people like it was like a magnet people were like, they were pulled to that area. It was yeah. very interesting. I think because there were so many trees gone. Maybe. That you saw, you, you saw that, hey, there, there is something there. You feel there's something new. There's something like, yeah. yeah. And um, it was one of the best <laughs> um, selling gardens that we've ever had. Everyone said, I want that plant. I want that plant. I want that plant. I'll, I get it. Cause I, I got a bit greedy walking around there too. <laughs> I was it. Yeah. Cause it just, it, 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 it was a lot of plants that I hadn't quite either seen before or hadn't quite seen in that context and combination before, yeah. Yeah. which is so refreshing because I feel like, um, <clears throat> 
I don't know, there, there's sort of been like a style of the perennials that we all sort of rode in a certain point, like you know it already and you're just like, oh, mm. yeah. And, and, and so then it's, it's exciting to see like, not going in a completely different direction, but just taking a little tangent from there to do something new. And I feel like, yeah, you're doing that. It's staying fresh. Like you're not just staying with what you've done. Yeah, but that's also something that I need. <clears throat> Yeah. In my, in my, in my, in, in your, in your sign. <laughs> in my life. Yeah. I always have a project. Yeah. If I don't have a project. <laughs> You'll die. Yeah. It doesn't, doesn't work. <laughs> Did the, um, there's a section when you're leaving the more gardeny section right before you get to the more natural where you have these sort of like slightly crooked willows. Yeah. Was that, did that also just happen? Like, were the willows there and you made them? It just happened. Yeah. And, and one of the, the guys who worked for us, uh, them, he made, he's, he's from um, Armenia. Mm -hmm. and I don't know if that came from, yeah, he, he, he that. made it. He did it. Yeah. Uh, because we, we cut, them, cut them off. And he said, Where do you want the wood, Bob? I said, Well, do just, something. Just do something with <laughs> and it. And he just put it right there because he didn't have to move. Yeah. <laughs> and and, the best and things, it aren't they? There, and it's, it's, and, it's sort of yeah. rotting slowly away, but it's, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it, it's, it's, it speaks because it, I, there, it sounds trite to call it soulful, but, but it is like it, you can it feel. Is. That's the word. Hmm. Yeah. I'm opening a window. That's why I'm standing yeah, up. Yeah, no, it's fine because it's surprisingly warm today, isn't it? Um, Fresh air. So let's talk about the, um, the, the Northern Garden Days and the whole, community that's formed up there and what's that has meant for your business and you personally and just the world of gardens like how yeah how because when I came I th I came to Holland in 1998 and I think I didn't really like discover what was going up there till early 2000 so you guys were already started like had when you started the nursery had that already started this yeah that, that, that started there was a, already a group of uh, nursery people who had quite a lot of contact with each other, mm -hmm. who also stood a little bit uh, in a similar way in their, their lives. Um, they had sometimes meetings, uh, Erik and Fleur, Brian Cabus, uh, Heileen Tonkens from the Heliant, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, also um, uh, Hanni Wouda, the, the woman with whom we had the other nursery. Okay, yeah. Um, she did, did her education at, uh, with Erik and with, Fleur. Yeah. So this was already a, a group of people who had similar ideas and knew each other uh, well. Uh, when we started the nursery, we, um, uh, as the really official moment, we uh, organized the first uh, Noordelijke Kwekerij in oh, so the first year, like that was like the grand yeah. opening kind of yes. thing. That was the opening. That was so the grand, opening. grand opening of your nursery, you invited all these other nurseries. Yes, yes. that was like... I, I find that very telling. Yeah, That's that was great. like 10 or 12. And it was a, a, a great day, uh, really immediately a lot of people, like 1500 uh, people on, on one day. And that became, uh, that, that, that became uh, yeah, a structural thing. Uh, every yeah. year uh, uh, together we opened the garden year with the Northern Nursery Days. Yeah. And uh, after two years, we couldn't keep it on one day because the last too year- Too many people. The last year we did it on one day, we had like 2,500 people. Yeah, people um, couldn't move it. And yeah. it, was, it was really crazy, crazy, crazy. And after that, we, uh, we did it in the weekend. And, um, and now the last couple of years, we had like between 35 and 40 different uh, participants. So it's pretty big. Um, yeah, and we still, we see each other quite, quite uh, a lot. For lots of years, we had dinner uh, once a year with a whole group of nursery people. Um, Erik and Fleur, um, they, uh, our um, not, not a nursery days were the opening of the garden season and they have their at, at uh, in September and that was kind of the, the oh, end so. of yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, well, they changed the, <laughs> the organization of that event a little bit so it's not that broad anymore but that was a little bit the idea of, hey, it's nice to start together and to end the season together. Yeah, yeah, that, that, well, I think, I think as humans, you sort of need these sort of um, anchors in, in, a, in a cycle. 
and yeah, it's, 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 it's kind of beautiful that that sort of happened organically that you, yeah, you create these sort of seasonal moments and then create yeah. that sort of, that's how you create culture. <laughs> and at the same time, it's, it's so uh, worthful uh, so to, to have uh, people with similar ideas and who are, and that's the strongest between us and uh, Erik and Fleur. Uh, Fleur has been Bob's uh, uh, nursery buddy for years, like, uh, it's, a, it's our best friends, actually. Yeah, and, yeah. and you see but they're, they're stopping, aren't they? Isn't yeah, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, also in, in more more difficult periods, um, you 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 um, hit the same problems, and it's so good to uh, also to be able to speak with with friends about such a thing. Well, what's 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 yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, used, I'm realizing I'm, I'm so used to speaking Dutch, and so I already feel like I'm exaggerating too much. But like I do, I do find it beautiful. So I'm just gonna. So what, what what's beautiful about it though is that you're not treating each other as competition, yeah, and just creating this community so that you all can be better as a business mm -hmm. because the individuality of each nursery is going to be there anyway. Yeah. Because like I feel like um, Eric and Fleur's uh, garden has declined plantage for people yeah. like. Um, they there's this much more formal ish like I, it's not super formal but it definitely has a much more um more reserved quality than i i think yeah, yours is a little the, more ex the lines the... yeah yeah you 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 have a structure more in that like different things happen but it's a little more like kinetic and theirs is a little more well, they have a very strong structure. Yeah. In that structure, they do, um, yeah, abundant things and yeah. Um, that's that's indeed yeah. that's, uh, that's yeah. But in, but in, but so but the approach is different. So like even though you're maybe discovering the same plants and using it, you're just because you're intuitively following your own passions and your own tastes. Yeah. yeah. The personality's different. But I I find I find it. Yeah, so good that it's not seen as competition. Yeah, yeah, that's that, that's right. Yeah, and sometimes it you have funny moments like at the northern nursery days, um, Fleur uh, for for half an hour is hanging around in our our stand and the other way around, <laughs> and some clients some clients think that we are really competition. <laughs> we are the the biggest nurseries in the, in the north. Yeah, and uh, like we are really com competitors uh, and. And they see us laughing and hanging around each other. But I think now they realize that yeah. we go on vacation every year together, and most of the clients realize well, now some, that we're, we're good. We're, yeah. we're best. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, But this is this is how business should be, but it often it's not. So I think it's right. it's not off. It's not very often is it like this. No. Yeah. No, but I think we're, we're we're lucky because we know we also know nursery people in the <laughs> in the south. They say. Oh, we could never have what you guys have in the north. Never. It's not that way. It never has been, and it won't be that way. But you know, it's it, it just happened. I don't know why. It's um, of, of course I think because you guys all. I think you were just so confident about what you each were doing, and you're open to a little it. Bit about to do it. Um, I think that we. I mean, it's for sure. I don't know about the other ones, but I think. <clears throat> for Fleur and Erdik and for us, we had our own vision of what we wanted um, and we followed it and we did it. And of course you looked right, you look right and left. You don't go through life with blindfold on, but you you have a, um, a path that you want to follow. You have a... Um, and then you never have to be worried that... And that that's the way I was with her as a choreographer. I couldn't give shit what anyone thought of my work. Yeah. I was happy about it. That was it. But and I think people feel that. I think people feel when you're doing something for the intrinsic um, interest and love of the thing, you feel that. And then, and then it becomes sort of synergistic and it'll grow that's absolutely, and, absolutely true yeah and people like it or they don't like yeah. it I mean, yeah and no big deal no yeah. big deal <clears throat> they want their their roses up storm they can go find them elsewhere absolutely but it's here. also <laughs> uh, like we we uh, we like old uh, uh, ornaments in the garden or uh, this this kind of antiques what we have in the, in our little shop 
um, pretty often people come to us and they say, oh, normally I don't really like those old things, but here, I love it, it's, it suits here. Yeah. And that's also a kind of a confirmation of the fact that they see that it's not thought about, but it's, it, yeah, it's, it's come, comes out of us and it's, yeah. uh, it's a natural uh, thing. You're not doing it because it's fashionable or you, yeah, you know, no, it, right. but like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's a coherent we did that. For, we did that for a few years um, with our shop for, for Christmas. We went to the brewer, brewers, you know, and we bought new things. Mm. I can already <laughs> feel it didn't work. <laughs> they, sold, they sold well. Okay. No. But we had nothing. We, we were like... You're like, why are we selling this? Why yeah. are we selling this? Yeah. You know, we don't have it in our house. We don't do this. And it was, for me, it was very difficult to sell it because people say, oh, isn't it beautiful? I'm like... <laughs> quietly judging them as your <laughs> you should have to, yeah, I hate that I want to I want to like what I have and I want to what I sell I want to stand behind yeah and well I think if you I think that's actually the, the way to do it like because I feel like if you truly believe in something you can always sell it because people feel that you believe in it so then it's just better to only sell what you truly believe in absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. and so um how how because i can Im yeah this is tactful so eric and fleur are stopping um but there's new like i don't know how, how long has jan dykstra been busy has that been at the same time like i feel like well, there's he, new he blood started, i think he started like two or three years after us okay so uh, yeah like because you feel are there new people coming like is there uh, not, not that many. Uh, not that yeah, many. I don't know. Uh, Jasper Helmont with the Kruidhoek, of course. Jasper yeah, and he's taken over Helions. Uh, uh, yeah, and he's, uh, but he's not really new. I mean, he was he was he worked with at the Clan Plantage. Yeah, yeah when he was years. like teenage years, already working. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I wouldn't know any new nurse. I'm kind of just thinking, like, like where nobody. are we going to be in another 10, 15 years? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, because I know, like, a little south. At, um, are you on scapers? It's more yeah. forty something. New yeah, and, yeah. yeah. Arion, uh, yeah. Arion and uh, Chris Christilanus. He is oak younger, uh, but that's but every... also not really young. No, no, yeah. but I don't think any. I think thirty five. So I started gardening and I worked at a nursery when I was fourteen. But I can tell you, like until I was thirty, like I was always the youngest person. I think most people don't get serious about this. Till sometime in in their thirties is young. Like they'll they'll be the odd man out, but it's it's it is really for some reason an interest. Like like Jasper was interested in when he's young, but it's not something that a lot of people discover in their teens or twenties. Yeah. I think it's it's definitely I don't and I don't not I'm not sure if it's because you don't have your own property till then, so you can't do your own thing. But I, I think most. Most people discover it somewhere around 35 ish hmm. when they like yeah. i don't and i don't know what happens to people that suddenly then they're interested in it um but the, i really do see that a lot so like in gardening 30s young true hmm. that's true but I'm, I'm i am sort of curious like yeah, also, if this culture is going to be passed when you, on when you, when you say that that's true because when uh, uh, last year, this year, I don't know. Last year there were no brewers, and we had almost nothing. But when you go to a brewers, when we went to Kikkerberg or Andres went to Berlin, we went to Bingerden, uh, uh, Bingerden uh, to yeah. England, to Great Dixter. Um, all the nurseries, it's all it's not old. No, not old, but it's it's, but it's older. second chapter. I, I would call yeah. it like it's, it's second chapter. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, it's true that now that you say that, I've never thought about it that way, but because I always think, you know, who's going to start a nursery? But that who's going to start a nursery? That's a good question. <laughs> yeah. Who can start a nursery? Yeah. Because you have to in, you have to start a nursery because you do. No one can afford. That's a that's an also a problem. A young person could not afford to buy 
a nursery. If we were to stop or if someone's to stop and we're going to sell it um, as a nursery, forget it. No one has the money for it. Not young people. So what do we what do we do about that? Like like so it's no one's taking over, for example, from Eric and Fleur, like because they're going to stay living there. No, no, no one's going to take over. They they've decided to. Um, um, uh, th this year is going to be just a normal year for them. 2021 is just completely normal, uh, open and, you know, the complete collection. And then next year, they're going to have like a, they're going to open up and it's actually going to be a sellout. They're just going to, what's okay. over is going to be sold. And um, so the collection's just going to be dispersed and. Yeah. yeah. And maybe it's interesting because like, if I'm thinking back to your story with the LA Guns here, like you thought, oh, we'll take this over, but maybe like not only a garden, because I, I wouldn't want to buy someone else's garden. I want to start my own garden. Yeah. Because it's such a personal expression. <laughs> exactly. And and so maybe a nursery, unless you're like in Bosco, where it's like highly commercial. Exactly. Is the same thing. Like, because there's so much personality in there. And like maybe occasionally you have someone like maybe maybe Lars yeah. would want to take over in another number of years and you figure something out, but maybe it is such a personal thing that it's better to just like maybe buy some of a collection somewhere, but start your own place. Yeah. It's a cricket eye is so completely different than a than a garden center. We're we're yeah. not garden centers. No. We're a cricket eye nursery with gardens it's a garden with an yeah it's its own little like because it's not a garden center and it's not a garden but it's it is it's sort of like a garden that makes plants and makes yeah and and you're right i mean if if we were just a nursery and it was a house and a greenhouse and we had somewhere where our production was and we sold the plants here and that was it Maybe you could sell that. Yeah. Because you're selling just, you're not selling gardens. You're not selling goodwill. Yeah, yeah, you are selling goodwill because you have clients for your plants, but you're not selling something real personal. Yeah. And then what, and what, well, I think what's been a product. Because I think, um, I mean, part of the reason I stayed in Holland um, was all these nurseries. Like I, I felt like I had fallen in, uh, into a candy store um, because I, I was passionate about plants from, from my teenage years, but we, we didn't have these types of nurseries. In Where did you live in the States? Jersey. Um, and okay, maybe- well, the, the West Coast has a lot of nurseries. Yeah, but... the West Coast, of, I think Oregon, Seattle, but even then, like I'm talking, I got into- Maine garden... was a couple I heard. But I in 1990. Oh, yeah. was when I got completely obsessed and um there's there's Atlock Farms but like very few yeah and and also like we were paying like in 1990 like seven or eight dollars for a perennial so like I was spending all of my like uh, <laughs> all the money I was earning working at the garden center I was spending on plants it was it was and then I came here and like plants were affordable. They were all sorts of types. And there were all these little like um, individual little garden centers that each had their personality. And so like, like I, um, I lived in Amersfoort for a long time and I would go to the Hessenhof every four to six weeks for like five years. And every time I would discover something new. Yeah. And that's, yeah. And so it's, it's almost just like, and I know Parts of Germany have this and parts of France have this, but like, I feel like Holland was like a wallah of, of all these little nurseries in, in the, in the. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's very true. I don't know any other, England, don't forget England has a lot of. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Lots and lots and lots and lots, every little town. It's true. Yeah, no, England has it as well, but then it's a very, um, I feel like England, um, their relationship to gardens is wonderful, but very different. Like I feel um, you have the whole class system and all of that. And in Holland, it just felt like, 
just pure in a way. Um, in, it, yeah, that sounds that sounds weird, and um, it sounds like I'm judging England in a way that I don't mean to be at all because I love English gardens. But I feel like I feel like I would I would call Holland a nurseryman's land. Like I feel like the nurseries have formed the garden culture in a way here. In a way, I feel like England had gardens, and then where there were gardens, little nurseries came. And maybe I'm wrong, I don't know how you experience it, but I feel like the nursery sort of helped form the garden culture because this was a country of nurserymen. Like, like at, I think in the, for centuries, like in Bullscope and everything, like all these nurseries started. And so like the, the garden culture was nurseries and out of that nursery culture, the garden culture evolved. But- Yeah, I, you have a point because if I try, I try to look back and uh, we've been to England a few times together before we were there to go to a, plant fair and um you had the kitchen garden i mean there you had a home <clears throat> had it, it, it was a part of it was like having the cows you also had a kitchen garden yeah you know, it was always a part of living and you needed plants for that kitchen garden usually you oh you made them yourselves or you got them from your friends or the plants that were needed, then you, you're right, then the nurseries came and started producing more and more and it built. Um, and you're right about it. And here, I don't know, I don't, I've only been here, what, 35, 40 years, but um, it's more, pe more and more people get into gardening because, yeah, the Netherlands was always into production. It, yeah, just, yeah. It export, 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 export. And now, there, and some of the of the businesses where we buy uh, cuttings, um, we are peanuts for them. Yeah, we're nothing. They send thousands of millions to America or to here or to there. We're peanuts for them. But culturally, I do feel like all of these little nurseries really did a lot. Absolutely. And, yeah. And I and I think like this whole Dutch wave and the whole new perennial movement could not have happened without the nursery culture because the nursery culture sort of developed the whole palette. Yeah. Yeah. And then the designers that we show, you can't forget the designers that- Yeah, but it, it's sort of- The designers that came out of the nurseries. But that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. because like, like out of, and Tonderlinda, I don't know if Tonderlinda started the nurseries, it was principally the one or the other, but they started like, like there being nursery people could not be separated from there being designers. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's like a really fascinating yeah. development. Hmm. Because Andres, you design gardens, like how, how have the two informed them, each other for you? Um, I'll be right back. Well, yeah, for me, for, we have, um, yeah, actually, I've been uh, looking at gardens my whole life, and uh, then you start a nursery together, and uh, yeah, you're working with plants, and you are, you are, you're propagating the plants, but you're using them in your garden, and so it feels very natural to, uh, to, to make gardens, and um, uh, yeah, and people come to uh, come to our place and ask you, "Von hey, can you make a design for us?" And so that that's uh, develops. Uh, what I'm hearing and what you're saying is that like they're so interwoven that you can't even almost think of the one without the other. <laughs> well, that, well, that that is a little bit true. Uh, I I think we we also don't um, advertise for uh, garden design, but it's mainly people who who come to the nursery already yeah. to ask to design uh, us to design their, their gardens. Yeah. Yeah. And that feels also feels good because we we know the plants um, and they um, when someone doesn't know our nursery um, and they do ask us to uh, to make a, a garden design. Um, we have of course uh, you have, have quite a long talk before you do anything at all but especially with those people, it's so important that they have uh, get a feeling of uh, how we approach gardens and plants. 
So we always invite them first to, uh, to come to the nursery, to walk through the gardens. It's not that we that I only design gardens like uh, like the gardens of our nursery, but um, yeah, of course you. Uh, that is our product. And we they they do have to, to to make a connection with this. Well, I think if you're if people are coming to the nursery first and then asking you, they already like something about what they're yeah. seeing there. And yeah, it's very rare that that we make something for someone who doesn't know the nursery at all. The first times we uh, that, that happens, those were not the the, the most successful uh, corporations. Uh, yeah, because they didn't they didn't they can get you. Expectations. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Most of my questions, unless we're going to like dive deep into specific plants, which I'm always happy to do if you want to like talk about your new loves. Um, a lot of the things that I really wanted to touch on, we have. Um, are there things that you think, hey, this is really exciting what we're doing that we haven't talked about? Mm. Yeah, only, no, not really. The only thing I didn't say, which I'd like to say, is that um, when people come to me and they um, uh, talk about a border, mm -hmm. you know, that, 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 that word, my border. Like um, it's a sort of a separate thing that's not integrated into the garden. I have a border and I need this and this and this. How do you, um, well, it's not only that, but um, when I have, um, a few times a year, or maybe once a year, <laughs> I talk about plant. I take a group of people somewhere, and I always get stuck in the shade area, of course. Um, and I tell them, and for me, that's very important. And I think the more and more people are learning that. But because in the shade, you have less flowering plants. They they do flower, but it's minimal. It's short. Um, some of them you cut the flower out before it gets too big because it's ugly you know like the hostas i love hostas um but i cut the flowers out very quickly because i think they're the most ugly thing you know that you could but anyway i create my gardens at least my shade gardens i create borders but with i i create them with blot with leaves leaf shapes leaf structure leaf color um and that's also a border and people can't they don't know they don't know what to call it in a shade garden i have a shade garden and i have uh, some plants there <laughs> you also have a border in your shade garden yeah a border doesn't mean it is interesting how you're more inclined to call the sunny more flowering plants that's border. a border but in the shade they don't call it a border hmm. I, I have a shade. I have plants in the shade. Interesting. I mean, I, I'm, 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 I'm sort of wondering border. why we make that distinction. You also have borders in the shade. And it's, um, and, and that's more of a creation. Of course, a border in the sun is also a creation, but I think in the shade, it's, more fun and more interesting because you really look at the, it has to be a community of plants it, it, that's it, for the, the sun uh, of course uh, the, the sun. but yeah. I, I think it's maybe also because um, uh, people uh, think with gardens more uh, like oh I want to have flowers 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 and uh, quite a lot of people who are first more flower uh, 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 orientated uh, later on uh, d uh, discover the beauty of, of leaves and of, of uh, plants for the shade. And that's maybe also or grasses. Of grasses yeah. yes. and, well, and maybe because a, a shade garden or a woodland garden, you, you already know you can achieve flowers all the time. It's going to flower a lot in spring. It's going to flower, maybe do some things in the fall, but a lot of the summer, there's not going to be a lot. And so you're forced to pay attention to the other things in a way that you're not in the sunny garden. Like I think a sun, a sun border, or garden is better if you pay attention to those things, but because it's possible to keep it blooming the whole year, you don't have to in the same way. Yeah. yeah. 
I haven't, I never thought about this before in this way. Why? Yeah. They call it an area, the shade area. Shade area. <laughs> we have the sun area. <laughs> yeah, like the sun the area. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> you're going to go continue in your shade area. <laughs> uh, wood, woodland garden, that's a very nice. Uh, yeah, the uh, woodland garden's a nice name for the shade yeah. area. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay, um, this has been lovely. Thank you. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna hope that we can get up there this summer and that like all these events, like are, is, is the, the Northern Nursery Days is it gonna happen this year? Um, we don't know yet. No, probably not in the, in, in the way we, we used to do it. With yeah. like 35 or 40 uh, Different participants. Last year didn't happen either. No, no and I know. We're, we're, we were thinking about maybe maybe doing just a much smaller e event. Like yeah. Seven or, or eight different people here. Uh, there is really a need for it. People uh, also now uh, with with the weather getting better, you really feel that people are already so so looking forward to uh, to working with plants again. If you, have, if you have time to come, you're always, of course, you're always welcome. But today I was um, in the shade, in the, the in, fern. In, in the, the fern. woodland garden? Woodland garden. Yeah, no, I, was in the, I was in the fern, fern garden. And yeah. it's so beautiful. Mm. Even now. Oh, I can like, imagine. Oh, my gosh. It's just, it's. Maybe I just need to get out in the car and like drive places in March. Normally, I'm I'm very, very busy designing, but it's. Um, I'm I'm itching to to get excited about gardens again right yeah. now. Go visit things. And I'm, the, I'm... <laughs> for the woodland gardens, the apiums. If you have time in like in March, end of March, to head this way, just... I might actually because I want to. I have um, yeah, the... I have some gardens up there, and I would love love to see all the epimediums. I might just in March just get a little like fix and be like, see how beautiful it can be. Because it's, <laughs> um, I love the woodland gardens in, the, in March. Be because of the AP mediums, those flowers I do like, but they're so small. <laughs> but they're almost not flowers, and then they get oh, hidden in the gorgeous foliage. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but it's so fun to think, wow, these things are growing here in the dark, you know. It's um, and they're flowering and they're happy. And then you see the nose, all the nose of the hostas are coming in, in the ferns. And March, April in the woodland garden is just amazing. It's uh, that's good that you say that because I, I never, I don't head up that way that often early. Yeah. I always think about those types exactly. of trees more in the summer. Exactly. This could be a good year to switch that up. I'm, I, I'm, I'm going to keep that in mind and I'll just get in the car and be like, okay. <laughs> okay. Thank okay. you. Right, thank <laughs> you. Bye. 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 Have a good day. Enjoy thank the weather. Thanks. Bye. 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 To learn more about Bob and Andres, you can visit their website. Townhoodfolt.nl, which I have written down and included in the description. This year, 2021, there won't be a Northern Nurseries Days event due to the COVID restrictions, but there will be various smaller events, such as a day dedicated to exotics or a day dedicated to clematis. So check out their website and see the schedules for these events. Thanks for listening. <laughs>